Number two, relative to the full scope of the evidence, God's existence is probable. That's point three here on the PowerPoint, but I'm going to deal with it uh, second. Uh, relative to the full scope of the evidence, God's existence is probable. What's important to recall here is that probabilities are always relative to background information. For example, suppose uh, we're told that uh, Joe is a college student, and we're given the background information that 90% of college students drink beer. Now, relative to that background information, that makes it highly probable that Joe is a beer drinker. But then suppose we're given the additional information that Joe is a student at Wheaton College uh, and that 90% of the students at Wheaton College do not drink beer. Well, now suddenly, relative to this new information, the probability is highly uh, unlikely that Joe is a beer drinker. It's highly improbable he's a beer drinker. So to repeat, probabilities are relative to the background information you consider. Now, the atheist says God's existence is improbable. When you hear this, you should immediately ask yourself, improbable relative to what? What is the background information? The suffering in the world? Well, if that's all the background information you consider, then it's hardly unlikely or surprising that God's existence would appear improbable relative to that alone. But that's not really the interesting question, is it? The really interesting question is whether God's existence is probable relative to the full scope of the evidence. And I'm persuaded that whatever improbability suffering may throw upon God's existence, it's simply outweighed by the arguments for the existence of God, which we talked about in our first session this morning. Consider, in particular, the moral argument. Much of the suffering in the world consists of moral evil, evil acts that people freely perpetrate upon one another. But then we can argue as follows. If God does not exist, objective moral values do not exist. Premise two, evil exists. Three, therefore, objective moral values exist. That is, some things are really evil. Four, therefore, God exists. So there is actually an argument for God from the existence of evil. So at one level, evil calls into question God's existence, but at a deeper level, it actually proves God's existence because in the absence of God, suffering is not really bad. The atheist believes that suffering is bad or ought not to be. And if he thinks that, then he's making moral judgments that he can only make if God exists. So what you need to understand is that most people who press the problem of suffering in the world are just assuming tacitly that there are no good arguments for God's existence. So the question for them is whether suffering makes atheism probable given that there's no good reason to think that God exists. But I think there are very weighty arguments for God's existence. And so I think there are good reasons on the other side of the scale that weigh in favor of God. And so I could concede, yes, God's existence is improbable relative to the evil and suffering in the world alone. But that doesn't then imply that God's existence is improbable since it is outweighed by all of the positive arguments for God's existence, and in particular, the moral argument, which shows that evil itself proves that God exists. 